Hey, 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 it's June Allen here, your racial sobriety mentor. I hope you're having a really great Saturday. Um, we're just going to wait for a few more people to come on. And I'm just going to share this broadcast to my page. So, hi, hi. I hope you're okay. Just give me a minute. Oh, it's nice and hot in London. It's really hot in London. Let me see. Okay. It's very slow in here. My... Oh, there we go. There you go, I'm live there. So let me just share this to my page. Okay, and then I also want to share it to my group. There we go. Okay, so hopefully that is okay. Okay, right, so let me just make sure that is live on my page, on my other page. <laughs> uh, right, so there I am, fabulous. Uh, okay, right, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is June Allen and I am your racial sobriety mentor from JuneAllen.net. And I teach you how to free yourself from the impact of racism, to free you from self-hate and to basically just live, a, live your life, live a great life. Um, so, yeah, so today I went to an event last weekend. I went to an event last weekend and um, it was for black women and, and mental health. If you look on my timeline, you see that um that I went to this event because yeah there's pictures and stuff from there but one of the things that kept coming up at this particular event was the whole concept around people not knowing how to get out of the stigma of don't check your business that just kept coming up all the time how do you how do you overcome the stigma um and they just didn't feel that they were allowed to speak they weren't allowed to say how they feel and if they did quite often they didn't get the support from friends, family, people like that. So it's very difficult for people to to be able to express that and know how to deal with it. So one of the things that I wanted to talk, well, some of the things I wanted to talk about today is what is the impact of that? What actually happens to us when we're not allowed to talk about how we feel? How does that impact our relationships and what can we do about it? So I thought I'd come on today. I just created a... Um, just jotted down a few things and I wanted to share five things that happens to us as a result of not being able to speak our truth within our communities and, and so that we can heal from whatever traumas and upsets that we've been going through. Um, so yeah, it was quite, um, I felt quite sad that so many women felt like that, but that is the reality. That is the reality. So um, just having a look at my notes here. Yeah, so not only was I um, inspired by the the black women's mental health um, thing that I did last Saturday, but this is also inspired by a new ebook that I have coming out, which is called um, Seven Ways to Unlock Your Sister Superpowers. And yeah, just kind of understanding that we have a lot more power than we think we do. Quite often, especially when we when there is that conversation about don't chat your business you know, we feel like we don't have any power because it's always about other people. You know, what are other people gonna think gonna think about us if we if we don't um if we don't if we don't talk. So or if we do talk, what are people gonna say about us? What are they gonna think about us? So um yeah, this superpowers ebook is, you know, seven of the, the powerful tools that I use every day 
and that I've used in my, my, my journey through recovery or whatever, my healing process that I've done over the last um, eight years um, that have really kept me solid, that have really kept me grounded, that have really kept me connected to myself, that I've been able to um, use to kind of build relationships and to keep the healing process going. Hi, to who's ever just joined. Um, so yeah, so the Superpowers book, you can get hold of that at um, superpowers.juneallen.net. So I'm really excited for you to see that. Um, yeah, so let's, um, if you know anyone that's going to, that, who's, who's um, hi, how you doing? It's nice to see you. You okay? Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. Thanks for joining. I hope you're going to get a lot out of today going to be sharing some great content about how you can get over this stigma of don't check your business so um if you know anybody else who's in that camp of i don't know i, I don't know um i'm chatting i'm not allowed to chat my business then obviously share it with them um because there's going to be some stuff that i'm going to be sharing today that's going to be really useful to them so the first thing to remember that obviously this whole business of um not being able to chat your business came from this is a historical thing this is a historical thing about us not being able to express our pain. It obviously, it probably came from the plantations about us not being able to say how we feel about things or express our pain or express anything in fear of getting trouble, getting in trouble. And then our parents, you know, that's kind of taken on within our family. I don't know how many times, you know, put your hand up if your parents used to say to you, if you keep crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. That is something that we were all told as children you know, if you basically express your feelings, I'm going to tell you, you know, you're going to get in more trouble if you show, if you express how you feel. So this is a cultural thing for us that we've learned that we're not really allowed to express how we feel about things, which is actually dumbing down our humanity. It's, dumb, it's dumbing down our natural ability to be able to communicate with each other, to be emotionally intimate with each other, to build trust. That's how you build trust is to be able to talk about that. So um, that's the kind of history of where that stuff comes from. So we have to be in a position now to be able to, number one, understand where, that's, where that behaviour comes from and then get honest with ourselves about how that stuff has really impacted us. So let's talk about how... Um, hi, hello, how are you? You OK? It's good to see you. Thanks for joining. Um... Yeah, so let's talk about the impact of what don't, ch don't chat your business means, yeah? So the first thing is, when, when we're repeatedly told that we're not allowed to express our feelings, what happens over a certain amount of time is that we internalise that stuff. We internalise it and we think that, oh, well, maybe I deserved it. Maybe I, maybe I deserved it. Maybe I, you know, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe there's something wrong with me that this keeps happening. So if, if, if somebody's being mean to me or if my parents are being mean or whatever, then I, somehow I deserved it. If we, so when, we, when we're not um, able to talk about how we feel, that stuff gets internalised. It doesn't just go away because we don't talk about it. It gets internalised and then we, it, we, we make it about, we think it's about us. And we can feel shame about it. We can feel shame about even having those feelings. I remember when I first started doing this work and I, I found it so hard to talk to other people, especially other black people, because it just triggered all of that stuff around don't chat your business and, you know, I'm going to give you something to cry about, you know. Um, yeah, so Iola says, good, thanks, interesting topic. And yes, this is def it is definitely cultural. I hear so many black people saying it and it's painful because that stuff does not go away just because we don't talk about it. You know, it is really important for us to be able to have these conversations so that we can, that is, that's an important part of the healing process. So the second thing that happens when we don't talk, when we don't talk about how we feel, when we don't talk about our pain is that, we constantly look into ex looking for external validation for, to give us permission. When our parents did that to us and society does that to us, we constantly look, we feel like we have to people please. We're people pleasing and we have to look for validation from other people to tell us, oh, it's all right for you to have that feeling. It's all right for you to be upset. If nobody gives us permission to be upset or to have that feeling, then we just stuff it down and we hold it in. And that can cause 
it's very damaging. Again, that's good. We internalize it more and then we feel shame about our own humanity. So, you know, and again, that's going to cause resentment as well. If we're constantly being told that we're not allowed to feel and we're not allowed to have our own thoughts and we're not allowed to express how we feel about things, then it's going to, it's going to, there's going to be a build up and it's going to create resentment. And when I talk about expressing our feelings, I'm not talking about dumping on people in kind of like an abusive way because, you know, people will sometimes use that as a way to say, oh, well, you know, I'm just keeping it real or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about because there's still, it's still important to be mindful about how we actually talk about our feelings. And I'm going to talk about that when we, when I, a bit more when we talk about the solutions. But um, yeah, so it is really important to not, in to, to, to um, be aware that, you know, when we don't actually talk about our feelings to each other or to somebody in a safe space, that it gets externalised and we just end up people pleasing. And that's what's called codependency. We abandon our own needs because we feel like, oh, it's going to upset that person if I talk about it. So we just keep quiet. And one of the things that I've actually um, learned about talking to, especially when it comes to family members and stuff like that about this stuff, it's actually, it's not appropriate to have those conversations with a lot of family members or, or, or people that are really close to you because sometimes they don't have the listening for it. Sometimes they're so trapped in their own pain that they don't have the listening to be able to hear your pain. So sometimes it makes sense to talk to somebody who's completely detached from the situation because then they can they can respond to you and support you from a more objective place and you're going to feel heard because you're not and you're probably going to have the ability to be more honest as well because you're not um you know you're not going to be worrying about what other what that other person thinks because you you know you you can talk to that per- you can talk to the, the the person in the safe space without fear of them of using it against you or you know shaming you about what you've said or whatever so it is really important to you know to have a safe space where you can actually talk to that person from a place of honesty and integrity so the third thing that's going to happen when you don't chat your own when you don't you're not allowed to chat your business is that you're going to end up projecting it onto others and what that means is you've got so much stuff stuffed down, yeah, so much stuff that you can't talk about that it leaks out in your relationships. So let me give you an example of that. Um, okay, so let's say for an example, you are, um, you're having a hard time in your relationship, your love relationship with your partner. And then what happens is you can't, you feel like you can't talk to your partner about stuff. So then what happens is you end up getting grumpy and, and getting really moody around with the children about something really trivial. It's nothing to do with, you know, that upset is nothing to do with them. But yet you're taking it out on them. You might be harsher with them with certain punishment. You might talk to them a bit more stink than you would do normally. Because really you're still upset with, the, with your partner that you, and you feel resentful because you weren't able to resolve that situation. This is what happens when we hold that stuff in. And this just doesn't happen. This just doesn't um, apply to love relationships. This applies to what happens when we, you know, living under the system of racism. As black people, we hold a lot of stuff. We hold a lot of stuff. And it could be ancestral. A lot of it is ancestral. A lot of it's stuff that's happened within our lifetime, you know. So whether it's stuff that's within the family or stuff that's happening on, you know, in the world at large, we have to find a safe space to be able to talk about our feelings because that stuff leaks out. That stuff leaks out and we have to have, we have to have our own ways of being able to deal with that stuff in a healthy way so that we don't put that stuff on other people. That's what, so, that's what being emotionally sober is. That's what being racially sober is, being able to understand the impact that racism has on us, that our behaviour has on us, that our upset and our anger has on us, understanding those emotions and accepting those emotions and then processing them in a healthy way. Um, one of the things that I quite often say to my daughter, actually, I've got so so fine-tuned now to work where my pain is coming from, whether it's external, whether it's internal, whether it's family-orientated or whether it's her, I know exactly which which is which. 
So what I, what I tend to do now is I'll, I can always say to my daughter, look, you know, I'm feeling a bit grumpy today or whatever, and it's not you. If it's appropriate to say to her, then I'll say to her. If it's not appropriate, then obviously I won't. But that helps to build trust and it helps her. It gives her an understanding of where I am so I don't project that stuff onto her. So she understands now, oh, mum is a little bit, she's not feeling that great today. So she knows that however I... Um, am if I'm a little bit distant or whatever then she knows it's not about her she's not going to internalize that and make it about her so she's going to understand that um, and I'm obviously being responsible for my feelings by sharing that information with her um, so that that's that's one of the healthy things that you can do with that stuff so number four um, the fourth thing that that happened when you don't talk about your feelings and you hold that stuff and you don't check your business you got to understand that when you rob yourself of the ability to express how you feel, you also, when that stuff gets buried, you also rob yourself of the ability to really experience joy. Because when that when that hurt builds up, that's all. That's it becomes almost like a pressure cooker over time. If it's a long time that you that you're doing this, it becomes like a pressure cooker that hasn't been released. And then you also deny yourself of the ability to feel joy at the same time. So it is so important to be able to have the space to be able to do that because then you just end up in, you just end up in misery the whole time because you're constantly trying to hold down those feelings that you're not allowed, those, 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 that stuff that you're not allowed to chat. Don't chat your business. You're not allowed to chat that stuff out. So it just gets held down all the time and it becomes, sometimes that can cause depression, I think. You know, I, I, I heard, I remember reading somewhere once that, um, and I always tell my, tell my people that I work with this, that I think that de- depression is anger without the fire. Depression is anger without the fire. And so all of those years of, of all of that time of holding that stuff in, of not talking because you're afraid of what other people are going to think, what other people are going to say, what they're going to feel, that is going to create anger and resentment you know, and so that cause that can cause depression because we haven't had a safe outlet to be able to express how we feel about these things. So yeah, you, you just just remember that when you're holding in that stuff, you're also holding in your ability to experience real, like authentic joy as well as a human being. So the last thing that happens, number five, when um, you don't check your business is that actually we're enabling white supremacy. We're enabling the system of racism by not talking because when we don't talk about how we feel about these, about these things, whether it's about racism or stuff within our families, you know, we, and we act that stuff out within our people that are close to us, the people that look like us, because we always act out with the people, you know, we behave inappropriately with the people that are closest to us. So they're, you know, they're going to be the people in our community so we end up enabling white supremacy because we just make the, the relationships around us more dysfunctional. So it is so important to be able to um, to be able to make that distinction between um, you know what is yours and and what belongs to other people, and to not um, to not to not talk about things as a way of enabling the system. We, we're under as much as much pressure as it is. Um, under the system of racism to deal with this stuff and we don't want to create any more um, situations that enables that that feeds that so we have to take responsibility for for our own behavior so those are the five reasons why um, how don't chat your business helps you I'm just going to recap those so the first one is we internalize the pain and so that creates a lot of shame within us and you know it's difficult for us to to like ourselves it actually breeds self-hate so it's important for us to be able to find a safe space to be able to talk about this stuff so we don't internalise it. Um, the second thing is that we're looking for external validation. If we're not actually given permission or we don't understand within ourselves that you, ha- I have the right to express myself and to, in a, in a respectful way, or find a safe to be able to express how I feel, then we feel we're constantly having to people please, to look to other people to and we're always externalizing our our worth to other people which is this which is destructive which is self-destructive and that when we abandon ourselves like that then it's going to be very hard for us to have really um sober and loving relationships because you know the relationship then becomes just about the other person 
So again, it's about showing up and being honest with yourself about how you feel. The third thing is that happens is we project that stuff onto others. The first, the third thing that happens is that we project that stuff onto others. So um, what that means is we vomit up all of our dysfunction onto other people because we can't hold that stuff into ourselves. It leaks out into our relationships, which is very, you know, which which is going to have an impact on how we communicate. It's going to have an impact on how much we trust each other and stuff like that. So it is really important for us to not project that stuff onto other people. The fourth thing that happens as a result of this is that we also, it also robs, off, robs us of our joy, our ability to feel, to express love, to receive love, to give love, because we're so tied up with all the, the, the stuff that we're trying to stuff down that there isn't any space for us to experience any love or any joy or any, you know, any, any of the goodies that, that, we, that we deserve as human beings. And the last thing that happens to us as a result is that we enable white supremacy we enable racism and we, you know, there's already enough, go, enough stuff going on already for us to be able to deal with without us having to, you know, feed more stuff into the system because we haven't taken responsibility for how we feel. So what's the solution? What's the solution to all of this? We have to find a safe space to be honest, um, to be honest about how we feel and the way that we start to do that is to find a really safe, safe space um, to get present to how we feel. And that involves being silent. That involves solitude. And this is one of the first superpowers that I put in my superpowers book. If you go to superpowers.juneallen.net, I talk a lot about that. I talk a lot about the importance of silence and how silence honours the truth. You can't hide in silence because it's going to tell you the truth about what's going on for you and it's important to be able to give yourself um you know if you can give yourself 30 minutes to an hour every day you know even if it's only five if you haven't got that then you know five minutes just something to be able to honor and check in with yourself to say actually you know where am i today how do i feel about being in the world today how do i feel about being in this black body today how do i feel about my environment how do I feel about my family and from that space of solitude you're going to be able to choose behaviors and actions that are going to help you stand in the truth so that is the first thing that's really really important the second thing is to um to start small start small it's not easy talking about breaking that chain of don't check ch don't check your business breaking that thing about not chatting your business it takes courage it takes a lot of courage to be able to um to to break that because there's so much fear involved and it's been ingrained in us to not talk about it because you're scared about what other people are going to think that it does take a lot of courage and a lot of self-compassion as well to have the courage to be able to speak up about what is right Again, those are, those are two other superpowers that I put in the book. You know, when I talk about superpowers, it is important to... This is something else that came up at the Black Women's Conference that I did last Saturday as well, about the concept of, you know, black women feeling tired that society puts this superhuman, unrealistic thing on us that we have to somehow, you know, be the mules for everybody's pain, for everybody's troubles and all the rest of it. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about superpowers. I'm talking about superpowers from a space of having the courage to be vulnerable and to and to ask for help and to find a safe space and say, actually, I'm going to put myself first. I'm going to put myself first. I'm talking about superpowers um, within your uh, being a woman, being it being, um, you know, as a black woman, we gave birth to civilization and it's about returning to that place and igniting our sacredness. That's the superpower that I'm talking about. And so when you, can, and you, when you find the courage to go back to that place where you can be, um, where you can reignite that part of yourself, that's where your natural superpowers are gonna start to show up in your life. When you start to honor that part, you're gonna reintegrate with that part of yourself, your higher self, your God-like part of yourself. Um, and that's when you're really going to be able to show up and be who you really want to be and not just some sort of broken, um, shut down, 
shell of a person who's kind of who, who's living in the expectations of other people that's not who you are at your core you know one of my one of my idols dr venus she always talks about black women being um god wrapped in flesh she's always talking about you're god wrapped in flesh because you gave birth to civilization so it's important for us to be able to remember that you are God wrapped in flesh and that you can, that, you know, just like, you know, in the Wizard of Oz, Glinda the Good Witch says to Dorothy that, you know, if you, all you need to do is click your, click your heels three times and you can, you've always been able to go home. She didn't know that she could always have, she always had the power to go home. She was running around doing all this stuff with all of these things, the Tin Man and the Straw Man and all the rest of it. And all the time she was doing all that stuff, she always had the power to go home. She always had the power to go home. And it's same for us. We, we have always had superpowers. We've always had these superpowers, but they've been drummed out of us in order for us to remain in control under the system of racism. So we have to, I wanted to share this ebook with you because I really wanted you to, I just wanted to remind you how important it is for you to be able to get back to that place. And you can get back to that place. You just got to be willing to give yourself small baby steps you know, 30 minutes a day to be able to reconnect to that part of yourself so that you can find your way home to yourself. If you want to get hold of the ebook, go to superpowers.juneallen.net. If you go to the link in the in this um, broadcast at the top, it, well, I don't know if it's at the bottom or the top, but you can go to the link in the broadcast and it will take you to the page and you can sign up for it there. So uh, let me see where my notes are now. Yeah, so we talked about um, starting small, self-compassion, needing courage. Um, Yeah, so the last thing that I'll say is, you know, one of the ways to to get over the whole stigma of don't chat your business is that you've just got to be willing to put yourself first. There comes a point, there has to come a point in your healing where you're, you're like, do you know what? I love my family. I love this person, I love my friends, but I'm not growing. These relationships are not helping me grow. These relationships are keeping me small. And it's, I'm not talking about you having to dump them or whatever, but I'm just saying that it's important. Greetings, Rise Empowerment. I hope you're okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there, there comes a point where you have to be willing to put yourself first. We've been taught... Black women have been taught that, you know, we're the mules of the world and that we have to serve everybody else. It's time to put ourselves first. We are not going to heal if we are worried about what everybody else thinks, if we are worried about what what the man thinks, if we're worried about what the mum set thinks, if we're worried about what the dad thinks, if we're worried about what the community thinks. Where are you going to be in 5, 10, 15 years' time around your healing are you still going to be suffering? Do you still want to be suffering in 5, 10, 15 years time because you're worried about what this, that and the other person said? You've got to be willing to put yourself first. And it's not easy, don't get me wrong, because once we've, when we're in that pattern of people pleasing and doing things what other people expect us to do, it's hard to get out of that pattern because that's what we're used to. So you have to start small. You have to start really, really small. And... Um, I have like this introductory, um, this introductory five day experience that I've created, which helps you to get back on the wagon. If you're, if you're already on the healing path and you need to actually get back on the wagon, you can use this, this, um, this empowerment training as a way to get back on it. It's just five days. If you go to, um, reset.juneallen.net, if you go to the superpowers link, it's actually, the link is actually in there as well. But it's five really, really simple days where I'm going to basically walk you through five different tasks that you're going to do for the next five days to help you get back on the self-care wagon. Um, And, you know, obviously I'm going to walk you through that. You'll have access to um, a private Facebook group as well so we can walk you through um, the different things. You can talk about, you know, how you felt. Because sometimes, you know, when when you start doing this stuff for yourself and actually putting yourself first... You know, the first thing that other people are going to say is, or, or you, you might start feeling guilty. 
like, oh no, what the, what's so-and-so going to do? If I if I take time for myself, like, are they, what, what's going to happen? Is so-and-so going to think that I'm being selfish? I hear that as well. Oh, the so-and-so is going to think I'm being selfish. No, you're not selfish. You're a human being. You're a human being. And you deserve to have time to yourself. That's That's what's hurting a lot of us out here. A lot of us black women out here. We're hurting because... We think in order to... That, that's, that's where our worthiness comes from. That's where our identity comes from. Our identity comes from what other people think of us. That's what I was saying earlier. Our, our, our worthiness is, comes from external validation. And so we don't feel worthy if other people are saying, it's okay, it's all right for you to have some time off. We have to really start to learn how to deal with our own inner parent, unlock, ignite our own inner parent, you know, we have to give ourselves permission to take care of ourselves, not other people, only you know how difficult things are for you, only you know the struggle, quite often you hold all of that in because you're scared of what other people are going to say and you, you're just going on suffering, this is what came up at the, at the event I did last Saturday, so many black women are sort of hiding that secretly they're they're suffering by themselves and that they're isolated their loneliness that was that was that came out of those those conversations but they're scared to talk about it they're scared to say to put their hand up and say i'm actually really lonely and i need help and i don't really know i don't know where to start so many of us think like that so then what happens is we just plod along and we're just going through the motions every day we're looking after the children feeding the children feeding the family going to church on a Sunday, doing whatever we're doing, in the meantime, we're isolated internally, we're keeping all of this stuff to ourselves, we're keeping it ourselves quiet, and we're not really being truthful about who we are, because we're ashamed, we're ashamed, and we don't, we think that people are going to say, oh, you know, she's weak, because she's, 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 um, you know, she's saying, she's talking, she's talking about her feelings too much, you know, and when I say that, I'm not saying that, um, I'm talking about finding a really gentle, safe, loving space to be able to do it. I'm not talking about blurting out all of your business in places that are unsafe, that are going to shame you into silence. I'm talking about finding a really safe place where you're going to be heard, where you're not going to be judged, where people are not going to, you know, tell you, oh, don't be in your feelings. The amount of times I hear black people say that to each other and I think that that again that's come from that position of that comes from the slave plantations that we're not allowed to feel our feelings that we're not allowed to be human because we've been objectified for so long we've been objects of the world for so long that we're just a workhorse we're just a mules that we're not allowed to act in our humanity we're not allowed to feel anger even though we're oppressed every day and we have to deal with microaggressions every day and we have to deal with it from society at large we have to deal with it. Um, we have to deal with the recycled uh, stuff going on within our families, and quite often we have to deal with the war within ourselves because we've internalised so much of this stuff. So it's important that we just get, need to give ourselves a break, man. Give yourself a break. Give yourself permission to say, you know what, it's all right. It's all right for me to start thinking about actually. Do you know what? I need half an hour to myself today. And by hook and by crook, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. I'm, I'm having my half an hour to myself today. I need it. And I'm going to take it. So if, if I need to, <clears throat> excuse me, arrange for somebody else to take the children today, or if I have to arrange to, you know, pick up the children a bit later, or if I have to get up earlier in the morning so that I get my half an hour solitude, that's what I do. That's what I do. If I don't get my half half an hour minimum in the mornings, I am grumpy. I am grumpy. Yes, sis. And she's saying, yes, scared of getting hurt by other people's reactions. Yeah, and that's the thing, because especially if that's, if that's, um, if that's been your behavior pattern in the past, that, you know, you're constantly doing stuff for other people and people are used to you saying yes to everything. The minute you turn around to other people and say, oh, actually, I'm not available what would you what, what do you mean you're not available you know and and it's it's hard for people to accept when you're saying no but that is part of the process that's an important part of setting boundaries that's what it means to set boundaries around people is to start saying yes you know 
And just remember that when you say no to other people, you're saying yes to yourself. Saying, saying no to other people is not being mean to other people. It comes a point where your healing is, is important. We're not going to grow and heal as a community until we have the courage to start saying yes to ourselves. Justice starts in your own home. Justice starts with you giving yourself justice first, giving yourself compassion. And that means saying no to, other pe- to those people that are around you first. That's where justice starts. It doesn't start, you know, by, by going out and fighting white supremacy. It don't start there. It starts within yourself, with you being able to have that conversation with yourself and say, actually, I'm not really being very kind to myself today. I'm not being very kind to myself today and I need to be kind to myself because I, I deserve it. And I'm tired. A lot of, I hear this from so many women that are so tired of holding in that stuff and having the pressure. There was one, I shared this, was this last story, this woman at the, at the event last week, the woman that runs it, she was telling us a story about how she had loads of shopping bags and she, so she was going to, um, she, I can't remember if she was getting on the bus or doing something. Anyway, she had all this shopping and she wanted, she asked his brother to help her carry the shopping bag where she was going. And the brother tapped her on the shoulder and said, oh no, sis, you got this. You got this, sis. You can carry the shopping bags. You can go on. So it's almost like within our community, we're still perpetuating that whole thing around black women being strong and black women, you know, we, we, we're super, superhuman somehow. No, we're not. We're human beings. And a lot of us are tired. We're tired. But you know what? We, don't ha- we, we need to stop asking for permission to stop being super women. We need to stop putting that on ourselves. Because that's what happens. We put that stuff on ourselves. And myself included. I am, I am the worst culprit of doing that. I sometimes, I sometimes need to, I need other, you know, my, my people in recovery. Or I need my therapist. Or, you know, my sponsor. I need my people to say to me, sis, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, you need to, you need to slow down. You need to under schedule, what I like to call it. Under schedule. Give myself permission to slow down and have that conversation with myself and go you know what you're not superhuman you don't you don't have to do it all today it's okay if you don't do it all today you know but we need someone to tell us that sometimes just to remind us that actually it's okay to be human and I don't have to be superhuman and quite often it's when we slow down that things actually work out better because we're able to have a more measured response we're not just reacting out of fear or reacting out of because of somebody else's expectation. When we sit down and think and slow down, we're able to give a more measured response to what's going on for us. So, yeah, so that's kind of where, yeah, the solutions to don't chat your business. So if somebody's going to say that to you, the next time somebody says to you, don't chat your business, you just need to log that in your head that you just don't need to, don't talk to that person about your business that's what that means because that if somebody's telling you don't chat your business it means that person is not available that person is not appropriate for you to be able to chat in your business with because they haven't got the listening so you need to find somebody find a group find a um if you want to talk to me you can go to um callme.juneallen.net hi Joanna. hi Joanna. i hope i've pronounced your name correctly <laughs> Go to callme.juneallen.net. You can schedule a call with me there. Um, and um, yeah, just, just you know, be really, really careful about who you are choosing to chat your business with. So it's not don't chat your business. It's be mindful of who you're chatting your business with because it's not any and anybody you can chat your business with. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, it's not any, any, any and anybody you've got to chat your business with. And you've got to remember as well that a lot of us are carrying a lot of stuff. And we are tr- a lot of us are trying every trick in the book to not let that stuff out. They don't want to deal with it. Not everybody wants to talk about it. Not everybody wants to deal with it. That's why it's important to actually have a platform and find a tribe of people that do want to talk about this stuff. And I'm not talking about a place of people coming together and just regurgitating, re-vomiting out their victimhood. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that are interested in 
talking about it with the, with the, um, and talking about the solution. What, what can we do about it? How can we take ownership of how we feel? How can we process how we feel? And how can we use it to kick some ass? How can we use it to get well and kick some butt, you know, on the planet? Because we, cause we can do it, man. Seriously, we can do this. But we can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. We need to, we need a tribe. You need other people around you who, can, who you can trust. You've got to be able to build a trust, um, build a family of choice. And that might not necessarily be people that you think are going to be there to, help, to support you. The people that you want to support you can't a lot of the time for whatever reason because they don't have the listening or they don't have, they don't have the skills or they haven't dealt with their own pain. So then what happens is if you encounter, if you keep going to people that aren't available to hear you and you want them to hear you, it's just going to bury the stuff that the pain deeper inside yourself and you're going to internalize it more and you're going to feel more shame and you're going to feel more upset and you're going to feel more resi- all of those things that I just talked about in the, at the beginning of the broadcast it's just going to feed all of those things you know so um oh you're welcome darling you're welcome rising paramount thank you for your thank you June beautiful words of healing plenty of food for thought you're welcome man we need we need it I'm just sharing you know we we need it we need to do this stuff together we can't do it by ourselves you know, we can't do it by ourselves. I'll leave you with this last thought, actually. Um, I've had a few people that have contacted me about, um, about the fact that they've done so much work on themselves, but what happens is they get stuck because they read a lot of self-help books, they listen to a lot of podcasts, and they think that they can do the healing by themselves, and that can, gets to a point where that can only take you so far. That can only take you so far. There comes a point where you have to be willing to share your truth, to open up your heart to somebody else who you can trust. A lot of us have have, have struggled with trusting somebody else with our hearts because we've had them crushed so many times and quite often by the people who were supposed to take care of us. So it's hard for us to open up to each other, to open up to other black people because we've had that stuff crushed so many times by lovers by parents by boyfriends by husbands by siblings by you know wherever therapists who are not equipped to deal with our our issues as black people you know but you just have to keep looking keep looking for people because there are people out there that that care there are people out there that want you to win there are people out there that don't want you to suffer around this stuff and there is solution but you've just got to be willing to keep searching and be and be willing to, to keep looking until you get what you want. Be willing to keep looking until you get what you want because it's out there, you know, and it's, and it's looking for you. As long as you keep looking for that thing, it's, it will find you. If you really want to heal, healing is going to find you. It will find you. When I started doing this work, I could, there, was no, there was nobody doing this stuff. There was nobody doing this stuff around racial sobriety. When I was, I was in recovery, no one was doing this stuff about racial sobriety. I had to create the platform. I created the platform because I, I know how difficult it was for me to do the work around racial sobriety. And I, and I felt so isolated because I was doing so much of it on my own. But I knew it needed to be done. And I thought, I'm not just going to get resentful about it and get vexed because no one's doing it. I'm going to build it myself. So I, I started talking to other black people about it. Do you want to talk about this? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling this way. Can we have a conversation about it so we can unpick it together? And then I started talking to this person and that person, next person, next person. Before you know it, there's a there's a there's a movement going. There's a movement going. There's a there's a movement of 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 black people that are healing that do want to heal that don't just want to look at the external stuff. A lot of us are trapped in in the whole thing around looking at white supremacy you know people telling we telling each other don't chat your business about the internal stuff so people just focus on what white supremacy is doing that's part of the solution but a lot of us are trapped there we're trapped in looking at what white supremacy is doing to 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 us as, as black people as people of color but we're not doing the work around the impact of it on us that's where the healing is that's where the healing is so when we keep telling each other, don't chat your business, we, we're denying ourselves the right to process the impact that racism has had on us. 
and that's where the healing is. So if you can, if you can, you know, find a small space in your day, be it 30 minutes or an hour and begin to use that time to start to reconnect with yourself and, you know, reignite those superpowers. Go to superpowers.juneallen.net. You'll find, you'll find healing. You'll find hope. You'll find hope, you know, because that's what it is. Once you realise that there's hope, then that's when the willingness will start to build. Willingness is going to start to, will start to grow and seed when you realise that there's hope. So I want this book to give you some hope. It's absolutely free. So just put your email address in and whatever and download it and you'll get all the, 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 the e-book there. There's seven superpowers. There's also an audio and there's also some other trainings and stuff like recommendations that I've put in there for you if you want to, if you want to go deeper into the subjects. But um, yeah, it's an opportunity for you to really just remember who you are. Remember you, who you are. You are powerful. You are powerful and you deserve the right to heal and be on this planet just the same as everybody else without fear, without judgment, without shaming. You deserve to be on this planet, you know. So give yourself permission to do that, you know. Has anybody got any questions or anything that they want to ask about the subject of your superpowers or any other issues about don't chat in your business? Anybody got any other things they want to share? They want to ask about it? If you know anybody else um, who you think would, would um, benefit from this broadcast, if you could, you could share it with them, that would be great. Um, sharing is caring and all that. If you want to find out any more information about me or, uh, you know, beyond the superpowers thing, you can find out more at juneallen.net. So I'm going to sign off here. So thank you so much for joining me today. And... Um, Ah, on the last subject of Don't Chat Your Business, I just want to say that recently it's been, it was my eight year um, sobriety birthday in recovery. And as a result of that, like I had so many people inboxing me about different stuff, about some people in, inbox me about their own recovery and stuff like that. So what I'm going to be doing this week is I'm going to be doing a series of lives all about my recovery so I'm going to be talking about sponsorship I'm going to be talking about you know racism in the recovery rooms I'm going to be talking about meetings I'm going to be talking you know you name it I'm going to be talking about dating in recovery I'm going to be talking about you know what is addiction in terms of the link between addiction and racism and how does that all connect I'm going to be uh, yeah I'm going to be doing a whole series on racism um, and um, racial sobriety in general, my whole journey through the eight years and stuff, what happened with my family, my brother, you know, all of these things. So, um, yeah, so don't miss it. So it's going to be eight days straight and I'm going to start from tomorrow. So, um, yeah, oh, okay, so I think, I think you covered it. I'm going to share this with a friend who needs to hear it. Great, fantastic. So, yeah, and obviously, yeah, the link and everything for the superpowers thing is in there. So, yeah, great. Thank you so much for sharing that with your friend. I really hope that she... Um, she gets the benefit out of it. So thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate it. So yeah, so I hope you're going to stay with me this week when I'm going to be doing these lives about the racial sobriety. So um, that should be quite an interesting journey. So until then, thank you for joining me and I will catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. See you soon.